Good morning, everybody. David Carley with davidcarley.com. This morning's topic, I'm stuck at the gym. So we see this all the time. People are working hard. Initially, they uh, see some gains early on in their progression, and then they flatten out and plateau. And this is the most critical time to address it because if you uh, get stuck and get flat, you lose your motivation and drop off and stop. Uh, working towards the goals that we want you to work towards. So I hear I'm doing everything right, I'm doing my diet, I'm doing my training, my supplements, I'm getting sleep, and I'm just not making progress. So this is what we'll typically evaluate first when we hear this, but we want to objectify, we want to work this up from the inside out. That may involve some blood testing, the vitamin levels, your lipids, uh, like we can look at your, your, your uh, nutritional uh, program, are you getting enough protein, uh, are you getting fats, is your breakdown and, and percentages of each correct, and that's a non-medical process for the most part, okay? But if we look at that and it looks okay, and we still see I'm not making progress, if you're greater than 35 years old and you have some symptoms, like when I go to the gym, I, my soreness just seems to carry for several days, I'm not recovering, I don't sleep, seem like... Uh, uh, my body's responding to the stimulation of exercise, that's when we might take a look at, at your hormones, right? So this idea of hormone optimization. If your hormone levels are dropping, which they start to do in your early to mid 30s, and that process continues throughout your life, that's something that's fixable, okay? But it's important to note that there's multiple hormones, not just one that are involved in this process. So for men, there's testosterone, thyroid hormone, Remember, vitamin D, even though it's called a vitamin, is actually a hormone in your body. DHEA is another one, a growth hormone. Of note, those two lower ones, if you're a competitive athlete, are not in play. We cannot use those kinds of things um, if, uh, if, uh, if you're in a regulated, uh, competitive type of athletic world. Okay, for women, estrogen and progesterone, thyroid hormone again, vitamin D. Also, testosterone and growth hormone. When testosterone supplementation in women has become a... A uh, hot topic and something that's very interesting. It's much, much lower levels than in men, uh, but it is something that sometimes is deficient and uh, uh, can help women. So we consider hormonal axis kind of the match that lights the fire in someone when those hormone levels drop and you're just not making progress and you need a little stimulation to help you. The key as always, as I've mentioned many times, this is medical, this requires doctor input. You have to know what you're doing. If you don't fix this correctly, you can actually cause more problems than good. But it's a situation where this is where we'll take a look at hormones. So we're looking at the non-medical stuff objectively, and then if need be, we'll look at the medical stuff to keep, your moving, keep you moving forward. Building lean muscle mass, losing fat, improving your lipid profiles and your blood chemistries, overall improving health, fitness, uh, energy levels, et cetera. A final word, uh, most of the time this is prescription based, so again, that's medical. There's a lot of new supplements coming out that are pro-hormone boosters. You'll see them, test boosters and other types of boosters. The verdict really is out. We don't have a ton of data. Uh, from what I, I've been able to read and, and, and learn in, uh, in studying this is you can get little tiny bumps uh, with those types of supplements. We've got to be careful. What's the regulation on, on these supplements? Are they healthy for you? Are there additives? Are there uh, lots of other things we don't want in there? So the verdict is still out, but in my experience, typically those types of supplements, if you're over 35, probably are not enough to get you where you need to be to continue making progress. So I get asked all the time, should I have my hormones evaluated or put me on testosterone or put me on this? Um, it has to be medical, it has to be objective, and we have to correct to healthy levels. Where people make mistakes is they push too high or they push too low. If you do that, uh, the health effects are negated. If you correct to a healthy level, there's actually health effects um, of, of replacing hormones to a healthy level. That is the key. So this is uh, just a little rundown on how we evaluate or how I evaluate someone who's working hard, doing the things we're trying to get them to do, but just aren't quite making progress. And if appropriate, we'll take a look at hormones, but that doesn't mean that every single person is appropriate for hormone optimization. If you're 23 years old, unless you have some kind of medical condition, this is not for you. So it has to be good decision-making as with any uh, medical evaluation, uh, correct to healthy levels, not excessive levels, healthy levels, and then objectify. Measure those levels every three to six months. Make sure they're where we want them so we're promoting health, not causing more problems than we solve. So I'm stuck at the gym. Lots of ways to evaluate that, lots of ways 
not only with these things, but also some training tricks that we'll talk about over time that can help you to keep moving forward. So that's the message for today. Uh, DavidCarley.com, Entrepreneur MD on the GCTV Network. You're stuck at the gym, lots of stuff we can do to keep you moving forward. Have a great day, guys. See you.